Good afternoon. So in the past year or so, we've had a lot of new uh, families and individuals who have been attending 1230 Mass, the uh, traditional Latin Mass or extraordinary form, or whatever you might want to call it. It, has, it goes by a lot of different names. And uh, one of the questions that many who are new to the Mass come uh, have is how to follow along the Mass. And so today we just wanted to go through how to use a, a hand missile. So obviously one of the things that we normally would provide before we weren't allowed to do it was these red books. It's an old one obviously, kind of falling apart, but this has the ordinary of the Mass in it. And then we would hand out what are called the Mass Propers. These are the prayers of the Mass that change um, the variable prayers of the Mass. So I can just mention, I'll just mention briefly um, since some people, usually people that are new will use this because they won't make the investment in a hand missile um, and it's a little easier initially to use. So the, these propers then basically are going to be, you're going to insert them into, their, into the spots of the mass. So the mass, if it's a Sunday, if it's a high mass, a sung mass, the mass begins with the Aspergis or if it's in the uh, the Easter season, the Bidiaquim. Um, then we go on to the prayers before the altar. And these are all the prayers that, that are, are the constant prayers, the invariable prayers. And then we get to after the Kyrie and usually the Gloria. Then we get to, the, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot one thing. Let's see, okay, here we go. Okay, after the prayers for the altar, the first of the mass proffers is the introit. So you'll see on this handout, introit. So that's the, what's one of the prayers that changes. The next one is the collect. In this book, it's very easy because they have this in the, in the bold caps. So you see introit, and then collect or collects. Occasionally there'll be more than one. And then you have the next proffer is the epistle. This is sort of the part of the mass that there's a lot of proffers changeable prayers, and the gradual Alleluia, depending on the season, there might be a tract, or the Paschal Alleluia. Then we have the Gospel. So these are all the ones, these are all the changeable prayers, the ones that have the caps and, and the bold print. And then we have the Creed. Next changeable prayer, the Offertory. So in this handout, you have them following along here. It's fairly self-explanatory. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, it'll take a little bit of time uh, to be able to kind of keep up. So then you have the secret, which is the only the mass, of the, only the proper mass proper that is prayed in a low voice and can't be heard. And then communion verse. Oops, it's not communion verse. Communion verse and then the post communion. So those are the those are the propers that are in the red red book. So for those of, for those who decide that they want are going to be coming regularly to the uh, to the traditional mass, usually like to get a hand missile or maybe somebody have given given you a hand missile as a gift and you haven't really learned how to use it. So the, there's a number of uh, hand missiles that are out there. Some of them are a little bit older, um, like the Father Lassans missile. New Roman Missile was new back in the 1940s when it came out, and then the St. Joseph's Daily Missile. Now, this one is a, this is the cheapest one you can get because it's only in English, so there's no it's not in English Latin. The other ones are side by side Latin English, so this is a this is a, a less costly one. The only the the only difficulty with these two uh, missiles is that they're not they're a little older, so some of the mat, feast days of the saints have changed. It doesn't normally affect Sunday. There's differences in Holy Week, but but so it's a little bit different, especially if you're ever to come during the week on a weekday. Um, that's not a big feast day. It's going to be a little different, but generally the they follow the same layout as the other two. I'm going to focus though on the ones that are the most current, in the sense that these are the ones. These are the 1962 missiles. 1962 was the last year that the. The mass had any revisions. 
So this is the Roman Catholic Daily Missile 1962, Angels Press. This is the Roman Missile 1962, Baronius Press. Uh, so I'm a little bit more familiar with this one, so I'll probably use, mostly use this one. They're, but they're all laid out pretty much the same. So in the, in the, they might have some type of index or table of context, uh, contents in the beginning, and also various prayers, um, including prayers of preparation for Mass. And then normally they start with the beginning of the liturgical year. So they start with the two cycles of the Mass are um, the the temporal cycle, cycle, which begins the first Sunday of Advent, that ends the, the last Sunday after Pentecost, and then uh, the other cycle, and that's the cycle you're gonna get on most of the Sundays throughout the year, although with some exceptions, and then, uh, and then the other cycle is the Sanctoral cycle, and that's the cycle of the saints. So these, these uh, the ones in the, in the temporal cycle, the dates will vary most of the time, if not all the time. Uh, whereas the sanctoral cycle um, is generally based on specific dates. So for instance, we had recently on July 1st, we had the Feast of the Precious Blood of Our Lord, and that's always on, celebrated on July 1st. Occasionally there might be a change for if it's, uh, it could be, it sometimes is, is moved or could be trumped by another uh, feast day possibly. But, okay, so, and then, so the first part of the missile then is the mass propers, just like this. And that's the mass propers. And usually in the middle of the missal is the actual ordinary of the mass. Now this is again the Aspergius or Vidiaquum, which is prayed only at the sung mass on Sunday. And then after that, we have the ordinary of the mass, beginning with the prayers at the foot of the altar. And one of the things that a lot of people like about the Angelus Press edition is there's some explanation notes on the side that can kind of give you, help you to understand the, sort of the context of the prayers and such. So this is the ordinary of the Mass. So just like, so basically the middle part is basically like this red book, which gives the ordinary. For Sunday then, Usually it's pretty easy for Sunday Masses because they tend to have all the Mass propers in one spot. Occasionally they'll, say, they'll tell you to flip to another section. So if you're setting up your Missal, you normally, for Sunday Mass, you would normally have, have it set here. First, if we're not in the first Sunday of Advent, the fifth will be going into the sixth Sunday after Pentecost next Sunday. So I'll set it for that one. But just so you can see how far into the Missal I've gone, I've already gone several hundred pages uh, to get to the sixth Sunday of, Ad, of uh, Pentecost, after Pentecost. So if you were gonna go for this coming Sunday, this is what you'd have set up. And so this has all the mass propers here. For most of the Sunday masses, except during special seasons like Advent, Christmas, uh, Lent, Easter, the preface will be the preface, as it says here, of the Most Holy Trinity. So if you liked it, that's something you could also set in your missal. Before the mass, except the except the, the preface. So as you go through the as you go through the mass, again you have the prayers of the prayers at the foot of the altar, and then we have the introit. So just like in the other in the in this in the red little hand little booklet, uh, here you have introit, which means you. you Turn to the introit, and there's the introit curve. Most of the introit, most of the mass propers, um, like the introit, the gradual, the alleluia, communion verse, the offertory verses are from the Book of Psalms, although there's some exceptions to that. Okay, so we have, so you're gonna be basically using just the two ribbons. The ribbon for the mass, the the prop, the the mat, the ordinary of the mass, which is toward the center, and then before that, normally for Sunday is the mass of the uh, the mass propers of the day, and then the only thing that you would also maybe want to, the reason why you might want to have a separate ribbon for the preface is because there's a number of prefaces and it's easier than flipping through, and then you could, if you want, you could if you want to set another myth, another one right after the preface 
and that would be beginning with the, the Roman canon. Okay, so then, so that's for, that's for most Sundays. Occasionally, though, a feast day will fall on a Sunday and that will, that will take precedence. So for instance, uh, recently we have the Feast of St. Peter and St. Paul that actually fell on a Monday, but if it had fallen on a Sunday, it would actually have been celebrated. And in, so if you look at the, so after the, in the second part of the Missal, after the Mass itself, and they have some, some of these, have some extra prayers afterwards, you have the commons. So that's the common of various saints. So it's basically starting the sanctoral cycle, the second half. But if you, if you go a little past that, you'll have the, the feasts of the specific saints of the year. And they start at the beginning of the liturgical year, so usually the first one is the Feast of St. Andrew on November 30th. Okay, no, actually they have the commemoration of St. Saturninus on uh, November 29th. So that's a pro this is the proper of the saints. So again, most of the time it won't happen on Sunday, but it does occasionally happen. And for those of you who uh, sometimes like to come, I offer, uh, sometimes will offer masses on other days other than the Sundays. And, and uh, you can get on the email list, send an email to the office if you'd like to get on that list. And uh, then you will be using, in those cases, most of the time the proper of the saints. So depending on the day, there's uh, various, uh, there could be saints. So like for instance, tomorrow, I'll well, go back, uh, a, a bigger feast day like the Feast of the Precious Blood, which we had beautiful sung mass last week for last Wednesday, is, is here and has got the propers here. So in this case, it does actually, there is actually one spot where it has the epistle on a different page because it was the same epistle as used for Passion Sunday. So it gives you the page and you can just set a ribbon for that. But other than that, everything's the same. Again, this is the Mass proper. It's just like Sunday as far as plugging in the prayers for the particular feast that, uh, uh, that would go in concert with the, with the, the Mass, uh, ordinary of the Mass. Now, some of these Masses don't have that many proper. So for instance, um, this one of tomorrow, Cyril and Saint Cyril and Methodius have there. Are, you'd have to flip, you'd, if you want to follow all of them, you might have to flip around to different pages. So they have like the first part is um, starting in 974, it's the common of confessor bishop. So these and Cyril and Methodius are both bishops. The, some of the prayers are taken from the common, these are more specific prayers that are just for them. And so, otherwise, you're going to find most of the prayers. There and the same thing the next day with Saint Elizabeth of Hungary, or sorry, Saint Elizabeth of Portugal, uh, the same thing that they only have a few of the prayers. So you have to. So for for some of the saint days during the week, it can be a little bit more of a challenge to set set it up. Now, of course, there are some days of the year there are no saints assigned, and it's uh, it's a choice. What are called feria days? They're free of uh, any obligation to offer a, a mass in honor of a saint. And that's when the celebrant has the choice of what mass he wishes to offer. When there's a commemoration, that's up to the celebrant, whether he's gonna celebrate it, that's a fourth class feast. It says on the here, for instance, it says you the number here, so it's third class. So that's usually obligatory unless there's some special thing that would trump it. And so for instance, this first one here, um, the commemoration of St. Santoninus, Bishop Martyr, is a fourth class and wouldn't necessarily be celebrated. Whereas the next day, St. Andrew the Apostle is second class and would be celebrated unless it fell on a Sunday. And following this, you'll notice there are, there are a few saint days that aren't in here that can still be celebrated. Now, first of all, there are a bunch of votive masses. And normally when I, when I offer a mass, uh, a uh, private mass that's not scheduled, um, but I let people know about it, invite people to, I will give a link to the propers of that mass so that you will know which mass I'm offering. And even if I, even if it's the same mass, I usually, I usually provide that anyway too. Occasionally it's a little hard to find them. There are some, there are various votive masses that are back here that have the mass propers. And then you have the different votive masses that are traditionally assigned to the different days of the week. 
Prince of St. Joseph on Wednesday, but there are different ones, other options as well. And then after this, we have some more votive masses. And then this also has some other ones, the funeral or requiem masses. And then there, are, then there are also some masses that can be celebrated, that are celebrated in certain congregations or religious orders, or even ones that are celebrated uh, as proper masses in the United States. This one also is for Canada. This one I think has for England, because it was published in England. So these are other ones that sometimes, um, that are sometimes, they can be a little harder to find because they're kind of toward the back of the, of the missile here. Do we have any questions from our audience, our quiet audience back there? Um, so hopefully this is helpful. I, 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 it, it takes a little time to, to learn how to use the missile, but the missile is, has, obviously it's very beautiful to be able to follow along with the prayers of the Mass. You don't have to follow every single prayer, but it's good especially to have, to be able to, to look and, and meditate a little bit on the Mass proper, because those, that's what's special about that particular Mass. And so it's emphasizing something, a, a feast day of a saint, or on Sunday, some aspect of some particular focus with the, with the Epistle and the Gospel and the other Mass propers, that um, by having and by following along with them, you can get a, a, a richer experience in the Mass. And um, sometimes we read the Epistle and the Gospel in English, um, but the, the other Mass propers are often very beautiful too, and especially the Psalms and are, are very often very fruitful for meditation. So I really encourage you um, to, if, to, if you're, if you like, if you're, if you haven't, if you're committed to coming to the to the traditional Latin Mass regularly, then that it's really good to have a hand missile, and it's worth the investment of usually that I think it's about sixty bucks if you get a new one. Um, so you can get them probably a little cheaper if they're used, but it's definitely worth uh, investing in it because it's uh, it's something that will really enhance your experience of of, of, of coming to Mass. Uh, I think I'll probably do another separate video sometime soon, hopefully, uh, that will kind of maybe talk about questions that people have when they first come to the um, extraordinary form, since especially if, if your experience is with um, pretty much exclusively with the with the ordinary form, it can be, it's a very different experience and it takes some time to get comfortable uh, for most people. And although uh, I think most people, if they find they go for a number of times, maybe four or five times within a fairly short period of time, they'll realize that it starts to click and some people really um, Recognize after after coming at, um, a few times that it's their experiences they're getting deeper each time, um, but it helps to have a, some familiarity with the with the missile and um, be able to follow the action mass. So we'll, so we'll, we'll try to record a video with that, probably more of a question and answer kind of format, and maybe some discussion. I'll probably invite um, some members of the lay faithful to participate because um, since I'm my experience with the with the extraordinary form has been not only as a priest, I mean, I went a few times as a layman, but it's, it's largely as a priest, as a celebrant, so um, it's good to have the experience of, of the laity, how they have entered into the Mass, whether it's using, you know, exclusively the hand missile. Oftentimes, though, it's, it's, it's actually just looking at the action that's going on in the altar and, um, and meditating maybe on a particular prayer of, of the Mass and not really worrying about following every single prayer you need for the ordinary or the propers of the Mass. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have any, I guess this is going to go on, I guess this is going on YouTube. So if there's any questions that you want to ask uh, down there uh, that I didn't answer or it wasn't clear, please do so and I'll try to, uh, try to answer them. Uh, if you know of any other missiles, as far as I know, these are the only two uh, current missiles, Angel's Press and Peroni's Press. So uh, if you're familiar with other ones that I have not heard about and would like to let people know about, that would be great too. So thank you for, uh, for uh, watching today and have a blessed day. God bless.